y'all what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and today once again i have a very special guest for you guys it is aaron wolf yo yo what's, hey, up, aaron? I, I, what's up man as a matter of fact i was gonna big you up but i'm gonna let you big yourself up tell them a little bit about what um what what you do um your your artistry and then i'm going to jump in and talk about the stuff that you didn't mention that i wanted to know Cool, man. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm an artist and entrepreneur. I live in San Diego, California. Um, I'm really fascinated by just like, well, obviously music, but I'm fascinated by the digital aspect of everything and how the internet is just the shift in the internet across all industries mainly, but, but within music specifically. So I just released my first EP, Greater Than Self, this past year. Um, and I just, I pretty much just wanted to I want to use my art to help people, which I know it sounds like cliche and you hear that all the time, but it's what makes me the happiest. And I know that there's other people out there that are dealing with certain things that I maybe had encountered before. Hmm. And so I'm just a big believer of like being a bridge of getting people like certain outcomes. And so that's, that's kind of like what my whole philosophy is. I just want to help people get outcomes that will change their life and help them progress toward what they want. So a lot of my art is focused on that. So. Oh. Yeah, oftentimes if you ask me about me, it's usually like I try and put that focus out on like helping other people just because that's where I find the most happiness, you know? What's up, man? I mean, that, that's exactly what I want to hear and want people to get a gist of. We have, matter of fact, first, I want to start here because what Eric didn't mention is he's one of the founders of the Music Mastery Summit. I said that right, right? And yeah, he, music, well, musician mastery summit, but musician yes. mastery summit. And he first reached out to me to speak at that summit, um, maybe about eight months ago or whatever. And it's what's really interesting about it is it's a digital online summit. I've never seen anybody do that in the music space. However, I used to do some things in the sales space. The sales, uh, I think, a sales hacker they, that conference did that, um, and and also. Damian Ritter, him um, and Funk Volume, he said they used to do some online summits here and there. Something probably not as well done as yours because technology just wasn't that great back then. Um, but it's a super interesting concept. And just to know for a fact that an artist is one of the founders of something like that, that right on the back intrigued me, right? Um, because we always talk about differentiating your own path finding what works for you as opposed to following other paths we even talk about how you introduced yourself you said you're an artist and entrepreneur where people might say they're artists and they do entrepreneurial things they're trying to figure it out but you introduce yourself as an artist and entrepreneur so um tell everybody a little bit more about your mindset or shoot tell me a little bit more about your mindset what got you into saying i'm going to build a conference out before even necessarily blowing up and having a big name behind myself. Sure. Yeah, man. It was, it was really a, a means to, in the end for me, it was, it was to get my music um, to progress, to progress on my own stuff. So I just, cool. like I said, if I can, if I can solve a problem for other people, it usually means that I can solve a problem for myself. Mm. So <clears throat> in the music industry in general, like it's, I've noticed a lack of transparency. It's kind of like one of those things that, and it's not necessarily always the case, but um, if you don't know, it's it's on you to learn, basically. And if you don't learn those things, then you'll kind of lose out. And people, generally speaking, will not necessarily let you know certain things that you might want to know and be aware of. So it, initially, I just I had seen these types of conferences in other industries, and I went to, you know, I wanted to basically shine a light and give access to people. Um, so I went and I went and looked for these. I went and looked to find some of these and I couldn't find them uh, as far as the music space, like any summit like this that was going on. So I just thought I'll just create one. Um, and then it's really cool too, because it allows me to, one of the benefits I got out of it was to be able to reach out to people that necessarily wouldn't have, like if I was just pushing me to them, it's like brand man, Sean doesn't have the time of day to talk to every single artist who wants to be like, Hey, check out my music. So it was more of like, uh, I think, I think you actually said like a back door way to go about of it. Uh, to go about it and it was more or less just seeing how I can add value because there's a lot of like consumption as an artist like everyone's consuming it's like they're paying for this you got to pay for this you got to pay for this so unless like you're like an engineer or one of these people that are like charging all these artists for these things as an artist you can feel like kind of hung out to dry almost 
And so I just, you know, I want to help other people with stuff that I had, I had kind of struggled with. And then I, I really wanted to use this as a way to help me also. So it was pretty much just inspired by seeing it within other industries. And then I just noticed that there wasn't one for music. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was a good starting point for me. Yeah, man. I, I have to say when I decided to at least look into the music industry information wise, more, uh, just, just seriously. But the first thing I noticed was in, in relation to the industries that I'm used to, which is like technology and just sales as, as a craft and things like that. Information is completely different in terms of how you come about it. It's yeah. two primary things. One, a lot in sales and technology, people think the product and the in, in the uh, in the talent, the skill is the advantage. Mm -hmm. In music or entertainment in general, it seems like, but especially in music, it seems like the information is their only advantage versus skill. And I think that might be because art is so subjective anyway. <laughs> yeah. they, they look at the information and in relationships as like the two advantages, which is probably what results into a lot of the BS politics and a lot of other uh, yeah. just dark things that go on. But did you pretty much notice a similar thing? Yeah. And, and like a lot of people not really like, like, so in business, like if you have, a, and I think that at the higher levels, when you have a lot of ad revenue and stuff, um, or a lot of ad spend to be able to use, I do believe that it can get set up to where, I mean, it's happening. These, these bigger labels and stuff, like you'll see a big artist bring in another artist and help blow them up. Yeah. And I don't know if it's happening as often, but it's because there's incentive for that other artist to help this upcoming artist. So I think exactly what you said and what, like, what's the incentive to give away this information, you know? Yep. So <clears throat> with me, it's like in sales, just to like, rewind back to a previous life basically as I was training people it was because I was going to benefit so there was like a win-win in it there mm -hmm. and so that's really what I tried to do with the summit is find a win-win like what's going to be beneficial to the speakers what's going to be beneficial to the audience who are feeling frustrated and like I think there's a sense of overwhelm with the information on the internet too it's like there's so many different ways and like if you take the shotgun approach of just doing all of them at once you can kind of like just run in place um, and then also you know by by it kind of like it just so happened to benefit me as well but yeah I definitely think that information is the only advantage um that you can have and I think now it's shifting to where being transparent being the person who's giving that information is now going to be the advantage so 100%. Um, people are moving yeah, to that they don't I, realize it yeah I definitely see that though like the industry the music industry is late on that as far as compared to even since I've done the summit I'm starting to see people offering online courses and I'm starting to see, I think there was even another summit that happened like right when mine happened. There's some dudes who do like a, a club where they do it. So I think that it's all shifting. And so my goal with my music is if I can make my music successful, it's just a matter of time basically with the way marketing and stuff works, then I can re kind of like reach back and help other people become successful. And it doesn't necessarily have to be within the confines of like a corporation or like a label set or something. It's like, the more people I help, the more it, it basically lifts me up, you know? Right. So branding in that, at that point, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like your brand is that you actually help people without uh, extreme circumstances. Like, I, I don't need your, your life on, <laughs> on a contract, you know, uh, which is why I get people like Gary Vee are winning so much, right? Yes. And, and that's it's a, whole, it's a whole shift in how everything is and how everything operates. And it's just like, it's really an abundance thing, you know? It's like some of my favorite people that I watch, it's like they literally are doing so well that they don't, they don't care if you know what they know. It's, they, they understand it's not going to affect them negatively. So no. I, I think that's going to be the big advantage is just being open and honest. And so that's, I love what you're, like how you'll go through and break down people, you know, their whole, their whole process from how they went from here to here. Because if you're on the outside looking in, it's like, how did they do that, you know? And everyone wants to, act like they're so cool in this industry like and they're just like that person so that's why they're blown up when really it's because they have a dope ad strategist behind them and a big budget or whatever it is you know obviously the music's got to be good but like you said that's subjective you know what's that uh you got that feedback going on you have something else playing over there no let me throw these in here like a phone or something no is that better 
keep going talk say something that better yeah, yeah. all right cool um what was, I, what was i thinking oh yeah um you talking about the fact that um artists want to also appear cool and just as these things just happen they're like in front of the curtains that's probably another reason i always think back to why a lot of information isn't revealed either because when you can see behind the scenes all right then it's not as pretty when you open up the watch and see the gears that are together everybody can appreciate that art like somebody like me i'm like ooh, that's beautiful i love how these things connected but from a general fan standpoint it's more like oh man okay that's not just he's not just cool it's because this this and this happened which is um it's an interesting way um, to look at it right it depends on your perspective as an individual <laughs> yeah and one well, as, as people perceive that it's like it's way it, it looks way more powerful if all of a sudden like you just throw this thing together everyone's like whoa how'd that happen you know and yeah. so i've learned a lot of a lot of artists will like, like delay their timeline so when they're doing this over here they've actually and they're posting this it was actually from like a month ago and so there is a there, yeah like there is a lot of um it's just the smoke and mirrors of it which like you can look at it negatively or you can realize that it's just like a tool that's being utilized and um you know it's just the the rules of the game so it's like you got to play within that but i i want to go against that grain i want to show people like dude these people aren't that cool like they they've just figured something out that you can also figure out yeah. and nowadays it's like you can literally go and find your fans and like the same people that listen to i don't know some huge trap artists in atlanta aren't necessarily going to love my my music or some bluegrass artist music but there are people out there that will love there's someone that relates to everyone you know got you um so i want to be transparent and show people like hey it's okay like you don't have to be frustrated you can do this too kind of thing cool um a couple more questions about your conference and then before i move on just while it's on my mind one was it successful in terms of whatever your aim was yeah man so that's what's cool whenever you're doing an online launch with ads and stuff it's you got to just basically find like the winning ad sets, the winning um, advertisements and targeted audience that you're going to use. But as far as the outcome, I learned a ton. I was able to apply a lot of it to my release. Um, I got tons of people that reached out to me, which was my initial goal is just to help other people. Um, in a very like money driven society, it's very easy to slip into like focusing on you first. So this was like the real first project in my life that I've ever done that was just like completely about other people. Mm. And so, and hence like I named my EP greater than self after. And so I got a lot of people responding back. I've, I've continued to have, um, we've continued to like sell the recordings for anyone who missed it. And I've had a lot of people continue to buy it. And like, even last week I'm having someone reach out like, Hey man, what you talked about with playlisting and that stuff blew my mind. Um, so it helped people. It helped us. It was profitable to where we can do it again. And now we have all the data um yep. to where we can basically just optimize it's like okay so these 80 percent of our ad sets only brought in this much of the revenue for it um let's only put the money and double down into the 20 percent that worked so it's going to be a process but what's cool now is as i go into it the next time now i have a whole new layer of of questions because i just used all the stuff it's like everyone's going to get to learn kind of like with me um and i've only heard parts of it but like gary v's book crushing it talks about that a little bit i've listened to it on audiobook a little bit and it's just about like inviting people into your experience because now it's like your music is not like your song is not really a product it's like you're a brand and your music is almost like you're like a business card or something you know to like yeah, invite them sure, it's marketing. That's, that's what i always say it is <laughs> yep. yeah 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 to experience the rest of what's going on yeah that's, so, that's so cool. yeah i love the fact that you are learning and you you created a vehicle for yourself to learn at scale but it's a win-win situation for you to have conversations with these people and then you're inviting more people and in increasing your brand by just allowing them to learn with you like it's yeah well dude and i got i got i didn't even intend on it but i got like fans out of it like genuine people that i've never met in my whole life and once i released my music they were like interested because like it's the whole people don't care about what you know until you, they know how much you care and like yeah. People knew that I cared about them that, that watched that because I did because I've been in their situation and it's painful to not know a direction no matter what industry you're in. And so I got, I got fans out of that and they're sharing my music in like states I've never been to. And so 
Dope. Um, that was kind of like a little byproduct that I wasn't expecting, but that just goes to show like when you do something for the, for the good of things, then blessings come, you know? Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Um, the last thing on conferences, because I have been to a few conferences, right. <laughs> and so many of them sell themselves as bringing value through the speakers. Right. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact just how we talked about information is being withheld in the music industry at these conferences. A lot of these people are not saying the real stuff that they do. Right. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the part that aches me. I was literally at one conference, not going to even mention the conference. And one mm -hmm. guy was speaking from a major make it, a record label, but I was on um, a bus with him. Was it a bus? Yeah. I was on a bus with him. We, we were headed out to a, to a yacht. And he was uh, talking about some strategies, blah, 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 uh, revealing a little bit more than he was going to reveal on stage or whatever to everybody else. And he even said he's not going to say like that, the stuff that he was telling us on stage or whatever. And he would only say that to the little bit that he was telling me to me. And he was like, even if he did, the little bit he was going to say on stage, he was like, his record label is prop might go crazy. Just a little bit he's going to say, right? Yeah. It, it kind of makes me weary to conferences um, in general, particularly when you, when it's people from those big names, right? The big name record labels or big name places or people that you see that actually draw people in, those uh -huh are the places that you're probably going to get the least information in, in my experience, right? Just because they can't give in, they don't, they're not incentivized. Now, when it comes mm -hmm. to your conference from everybody you got to talk to, do you feel like they give, they've given a lot more than most conferences? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't really speak as far as like in the past, I've been in the music industry forever, but I do know that just the difference in the school of thought, like, like um, one of our speakers, well, I mean, even your channel, dude, like on your channel, all you're doing is trying to add value. So like yeah. you were one of our speakers and you know, you understand this. So I tried to reach out to people that one of the big things for me was having people that had a list because then it would get more exposure and more reach. So I think because I reached out to a lot of people like you, like Wendy Day, who's awesome. Yeah. Um, all, all these different people that like understand, like if you give value, like it's plain and simple. If, if you're a, a business, whatever it is, and you can get someone from here to here, then they're going to want to know how to get from here to here. And eventually you can monetize that as long as they're earning more or getting more value out of it than, you know, you're earning off of them learning that from you. So obviously, and the, if, for me, it was different because it was just for my music exposure and for me to solve a personal problem. Mm -hmm. But I do think that a lot of these speakers, like, all of my speakers were down to do it for free because they were down for the actual mission. And I think that when our vision was based off of like helping people, only the people that could relate to wanting to solve that mission with me are the ones who said, yeah, but I can, I can see that where people don't, you know, they'll withhold stuff and tell you that it's one thing when that's just like the very surface of it. Um, but I think that's dying, dude. I really do because there's the internet's crazy. Like you, like we don't have to play by any rules. It's completely, open and and whatever we want to do we can do so i i do think that that's kind of like the old it's dying out probably in 10 or 15 years it won't even be you know everyone will that'll be the bigger disadvantage if you do that do you know what i'm saying yeah for sure fair enough man and you dropped your album or ep how soon after the conference man it was i can't believe i don't know this off the top of my head it was like a month or two after i think okay um so yeah, and it was, it was pretty cool. I, the thing with all these systems that like getting on playlists and all that stuff is you kind of have to stay on top of them. So initially we got on a bunch of big play, I got on a bunch of big playlists and it kind of spiked my, my Spotify numbers and all that stuff. But it was just a couple months after and it was really cool. Like I said, cause I had people from the conference that I didn't even know that were genuinely interested. Like I wouldn't have known you were like watching what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was, it caught me off guard. Like when you said that. Um, you're like, Hey, dude, be on here. I was like, Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Pretty dope. I mean, yeah, just to let you guys know, uh, I, yeah, I definitely reached out to him. He didn't reach out for, uh, to me for this interview. Um, <laughs> I don't, I really don't take requests for interviews. Um, so, 
Don't just, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> just as a reminder. Um, yeah, exactly. But um, you mentioned the fact that you got on Spotify and you got on a lot of uh, playlists. What did you do to get on those playlists? Man, so that was one thing that I learned from the conference, actually. Um, Cody Patrick uh, was talking about Spotify playlist pitching. And as someone from background that I have with sales, like pitching things is just selling it, basically. Yep. So I was like, man, how are they doing these pitches and stuff? And I just kind of came up with a plan to find all the different Spotify playlists. So I guess there's two ways to go about it. You can either invest a bunch of money into like paying for exposure. And with where I was at, I didn't want to do that. So the other thing that I learned when talking to Cody, watching the sessions for the, from the summit was that you can actually just get on a playlist. And if you get on a playlist, that might have X amount of people listening to it per day. So it's like way easier to get on one of those than to expose yourself to a bunch of individuals. And so I just came up with a strategy to reach out. Um, I wrote down a big list of people again, big, big old list of people that I knew had Spotify playlists just from going online and creeping. Mm-hmm. And um, I just reached out to them. The, the main thing that made a difference though is again, I didn't reach out with them like, hey, put my song on your list. I said, hey, I love your playlist because I genuinely did. I found ones that I liked. So I complimented what they're doing. I told them why I'm reaching out to them is because they're awesome. And then I said, in exchange for you putting this on your playlist, I think it would fit well. Um, I would, I'll share your playlist with my following. And so when there's that win-win, again, just like in sales or in any type of healthy transaction or relationship, both parties are benefiting, then it, it makes it, you know, there's more incentive for them. So I just literally just a numbers game. And it might take one out of every 12 emails that I send. Yep. But, if I, but if I know that after doing 60 calls, if I have five people that said, you know, put my song on there, then I know like, okay, if I want 15 things or 15 playlist placements and it took me 60 emails to get five, then what do I got to do? I just got to do three times that. Right. So for me, it's all, I'm trying to just develop systems that I can, that I can work on. And then eventually like, like you'll notice now, I don't even know. I think my Spotify playlists are too high right now, but it's because I've taken energy away from that to work on other stuff ideally down the road i'd like to just bring on someone and be like hey dude here's my system to get spotify playlists going on Mm. and so for me it's like you have like the one guy here's like the perfect thing that i i i've thought about this quite a bit i think it might be from like think and grow rich or something but you have the two schools of thought like back in the day there are these two ship captains and one of them teaches everybody on the ship to learn just one job and pays them well enough to where they're satisfied but they only know that one job then the other dude the other ship captain teaches every single person on the ship how to run every single part of the ship. And then he goes and gets another ship. And so now he has two ships under him. So going back to not being scarce with things, I would like to um, build these systems where I just reach out. And I think with the Spotify thing, it was, it works because I'm exchange. I'm in exchange. I'm saying, Hey, I'll share you. I'll share your playlist with my following. Now, coolest part about that is when my following keeps growing, then my ratio of people saying yes is going to be more because if someone's like, Hey, put me on your playlist, I'll share it with my hundred thousand people or whatever, then, you know, you don't have to make as many calls, but I'd like to kind of develop it as a system. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, are you maintaining your relationships with those people that you reach out to? Right. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing too, is if like, like I, I've even reached out to some of them, they're like, Hey man, I like your music, but it's not quite this genre. And I'm like, sweet. If I think of, if I come across anyone else, I'll refer them to you, you know? Cool. Cool. Um, man. So you're really taking the sales approach into mindset. I hear all throughout everything you're saying, but create no systems. And that's what it's all about. I always talk about systems. So I'm glad that you spoke about like you just mapped out some systems that you've developed from yourself and made it pretty clear because I think when people hear a system, it's still like this abstract thing, but it's really yeah. how you achieve results. And it, it is not necessarily a way to get a hundred percent. It's just, he said, I mean, I get my number by going high in volume and yeah. <laughs> over time. It might take less volume after I have more pool and credibility. And that's, that just is what it is. Nobody wants to do the groundwork at first, but that's, yep. that's dope. And, I want to make be clear on the type of artist you are, because I know typically I might have like hip hop or rappers on my channel or things like that, but you are not a rapper. What Man. Is- so I, I actually, can't, I, I did a whole project that was like, like rap music and stuff oh, a while back, but I, I, 
I've kind of, been, I mean, it's not even anything anyone over here, but I've, I've really been developing my sound for like years. Um, basically like for a, a specific genre, it's hard to put, put myself into that. And I think now with, um, the way that genres are like all crossing, it's, it's kind of like one of these things where I want to leave it open to interpretation. What I will say though, if people have just met me is, um, all I could describe different influences. So I'm really weird. I go through these phases, like where if I love a song, I literally listen to that thing, like on repeat for like 50 times in a row, maybe a hundred times in a row. And so depending on whatever I'm into at that time, that's like what I end up writing ends up, it kind of bleeds through, but I'm, my music is like a Southern Cal. So I live here in San Diego. I listen to a lot of reggae. Um, it's like a, like a SoCal beach vibe. But then I spend a lot of time in Atlanta and a couple of my mentors are out there. And so there's like trap influence within like the actual production. Everything that I write is based around my acoustic guitar. Um, so it's really, it's completely a sound of my own. And I feel like it's just taken me a long time of like, kind of emulating different artists that's like when I was in like my little like hip-hop phase it was like you know at that time I was I wasn't necessarily being unique and so now I just I'm basically just me and oftentimes I find that my style will change Who ongoing in hip-hop man it was back when I was like super into like uh man I was like in like g Easy, and I was like like just pretty much all like the popular stuff from like four four three four four years ago Got it. Um, and I did I did a whole project with that but it's actually something that I didn't really believe in the content that I was seeing it about like mm -hmm. it was all really materialistic and so it, it's been a long road but now that I've I've really dialed in like what my message is and everything and it's in line with my brand more okay but it's it's like a reggae hip-hop trap music kind of production and then like a southern california beach vibe but some of the artists are like Jack Johnson, Slightly Stupid. But I'm influenced from everything from like Incubus to Sublime to like Tupac. And like, it, it's really, it's hard to say, man. I just sound like me though. So I'm confident in it, you know? But all right, you know where you are now artistically. How would you mm -hmm. say you would feel if that first project back when you were emulating g Easy and whoever else, how would you mm -hmm. drop that and that music blew up? And now that you are where you are now. I'd be cool with it. And I, pro and I may end up, I don't know, who knows, down the road, I might end up putting, showing some people. But the thing about it is, is like, I, I wasn't, it just didn't reflect me anymore. You know, like that's things. If you, if you start making music and stuff, like regardless of, of what it stands for, like that was me at that moment in time. So I'm not necessarily ashamed of it. It was just not, it was just not what I wanted to put out initially because I want, I'm really big into psychology and like, the things that we listen to throughout the day and like mm -hmm. our own self-talk and shit. And so I just didn't want to be out there talking about like, Put that out there, so what so. I want, yeah. So what I want the same things, nice house, gold chant. Like I wasn't as well. Me. That's actually mm -hmm. the reason I don't talk about certain stuff on a channel. Like I don't really get deep into the gossip. I've had some videos that I've taken down where I'm like, eh, it's, it's yeah. doing well, it's going viral, but it's not, people are interpreting it not how I want it to be. And it's a little bit, I don't. I just don't like putting that energy out there. So I, I completely get it. But to be yeah. clear, uh, to be clear though, I wasn't saying if you dropped that album today. Uh -huh. I was saying like if you if it if you dropped it back then and it blew up before you even found this new sound, do you think you would have chased that path of success and kind of had a you know a hard crash before you switched directions? That's the thing, man. I was ready. I was ready to go. I was yeah. like, man, I'm making money. I'm like, and then I just had some life things change, and it's like. Like we have those divine storms where everything kind of like falls apart. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was so that I could go back to a foundation of like, honestly, it sounds cheesy, but like being healthy, like mentally and being healthy, like physically and yeah. having a healthy lifestyle with balance and all this stuff. And I just think that there's a lot of toxic beliefs in the, in the entertainment industry um, as far as like what's cool, you know, it was like when I was like 20, early twenties and stuff, like, yeah, that shit was cool to me. But as I've kind of grown up and stuff, like, like certain things are like, you know, consistent and they're usually like positive things. And so I just want to reflect like my growth as a person within my music. But yeah, I mean, if anybody likes my music that like, you know, you make it so that you can impact other people. And it's also a therapy to ourselves as artists, but that, at least that's my motivation. I want to, I want to like 
give people the feeling that I got listening to certain artists, you know? So, so, so how do you plan to move forward? When's the next time you're dropping music? So I'm currently writing. Um, I've got what's, what was really cool about the summit and just releasing an EP. And I wish people would have like just spelled this out to me before is like, once you release something and yeah, sure. If you invest a couple grand or whatever it ends up being, if once you put that out there, then all of a sudden people are going to start wanting to work with you if it's dope. And so my, one of the big challenges that I had early on was that everything costed money. And if I, I knew what quality I wanted and I knew the kind of people I want to work with and it was, you know, expensive to make one song yep. and then you look and then you look at the actual like monetary return on it and it's like it's an expensive ass hobby you know yeah. <laughs> so so what's been cool about this now is i have producers that are reaching out to me like hey dude i love your music um i want to work with you and so now i'm negotiating on uh like if i work with people it's gonna be like hey dude i'll give you a portion of what we create together as far as like the publishing and all that yeah. stuff versus hey give me a bunch of money up front and then also I get a piece of like, those were just the things that weren't spelled out to me. Yeah, man. Um, I think it was important by what you're saying right there. We always talk about music being marketing. Well, the people who are understanding today, we understand that, Hey, music is marketing, but we're still usually messaging it, messaging it for the fact that it's marketing to the consumers, but it's yeah. also marketing to the other professionals out there. That's what you're touching on. And I never yeah. thought that way but i know it's that way for me as well i will reach out to people if i say oh man that's that's dope man how'd you do this or do you know mm -hmm. anybody that, that could help you out because i might know somebody so i get it yep yeah so now that i've shown momentum and it's like the whole thing like people help those or god helps those but people want to help people who are helping themselves yeah. and so when i put that out now all of a sudden it's accelerated when I, you know like my musical situation now i don't have to go out and raise five or whatever thousand dollars to make this next um project go on because i'm going to try and work with people who who will work with me and then just do it because they believe in what i'm doing so as far as my next project release um i'm not sure the date but i'm writing everything right now i'm i feel confident kind of going at my own pace just with the way that the internet and digital marketing works i don't see any rush um i'm gonna do the summit again early early this next year and so probably sometime after that, um, I don't know, maybe do like, a, maybe do a Kickstarter or something like that, but nice. you can do a it, package it, deal, man. You package your project with a summit ticket. <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah. I know. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all up in the air right now, but I just, it was a long time coming to release that first one Yeah. and getting that out there, just getting the feedback and stuff. I'm just more energized artistically than I've ever been really. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll be soon, but, you know, I'm, I'm just always writing, always writing music and, and working on that stuff. So it's just day by day. Okay. So your patience tells me that you aren't doing music full time yet. No, I am. Um, it's just, so I, I, I am, but I do have other things that I'm, that I'm working with to sustain. Cause it's like, I, I didn't, I had a certain type of income before. And so I want to be able to keep, keep that income up to where I can continue investing into my music. So I'd rather release a project every year than release like two smaller ones. If I can have more resources behind that one. So I just want to be able to make this next one a little bit further reach. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So cool. So I don't know how much you want to talk about your personal life, but I would love to hear you talk about at least your transition from, Hey, I'm working, um, describe the type of job you were doing before and I'm going to make this jump. What's my mindset to make this jump? And why did you decide it? When did you decide it? And then, you know, I want to get into that side of things because a lot of people are in that space. Yeah, totally. And I think that's the biggest challenge. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I, I don't have it completely mastered. Of course. Um, for me, the big thing is having something that doesn't drain my energy that can still bring in enough money to supplement the progress that I need with my music. So like you have a set amount of overhead cost for a certain project or whatever, whether it's marketing or recording the music or whatever it ends up being. And it's really, it's like, it's this awkward space to be in unless you have some balance. So I was doing, I did door to door sales for 10 years, different industries and stuff. And then I finally, door? yeah, yeah, man. I, oh. I, I ran, yeah, I ran sales teams. So I would recruit dudes. And then we'd go travel the country basically and we do summer, summer sales programs. So 
I've, I've literally knocked on like hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of doors over the last like 10 years. And so I went after the EP release, I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to do music full time here. I did the summit. So the summit's bringing in passive stuff right now. Cause a lot of people just come across it organically. Um, and then I have, I took a break completely from work. Like I just did music and I just did the same thing as far as booking shows. I just come up with a system. I found where other people were playing shows out here and I just started reaching out. So currently my income is split between sh making money off of playing shows locally here. And my goal for that is to build up an audience probably just so that I can obviously build up my presence, but you know, people for if I do a Kickstarter down the road or something like that. And then um, I do, I still actually do some sales stuff on the side because it just, I wasn't in a position like where I was stoked on how fast I can make things happen. So I, I quit that. I, I went about three months and then I just realized that I'm going to get where I want to go faster if I do have some supplemental income. Um, the goal, I guess, would be just to eventually get to where the summit and these different things are outweighing that. But the most important thing for me is that I don't have a job that dominates my life. And for a while there, I was like that. Like, yeah. and you can't, you can't create if you've been at some job that's soul sucking all day. At least I can. 100%. Yeah. man. I, I love that because I think we have this narrative that we push in America in general, but especially within the uh, music industry. And I know, especially, especially um, within like just a uh, black culture, that you have to really always burn all ships and that's yeah. the only way. Um, but yeah. I think that's great in terms of a mentality in moving forward. But at the same time, it encourages, when you couple that with the mentality of microwave and I want things fast, it yeah. completely skews anything. You think, hey, I'm gonna stop, burn all my bridges and in three to six months, I'm gonna be in a place that is desirable and yeah. that's usually not that's not it because it takes a little bit away from the amount of time to build there is a type of time where you should commit but yep. with that 100 percent, you have to have some foundation um set so I, I love the mindset of hey i'm going to do something that allows me to live and maybe even give me some additional marketing dollars for my stuff because it needs to be marketed yeah you have to be your own investor at the beginning yeah. So it doesn't take the energy away. Right. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's totally the thing is, um, is just your energy, man. And like, it's, that's one of my big like dilemmas just with the world and life is how many people are doing stuff that they hate doing. Yep. And so like, I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. Like I got, I have bills every single month I got to pay and everything like that. But it's, like, it's cool to make that jump, be like, all right, I'm done with all this. I'm just doing music full time. And then to realize like, okay, maybe there's a more, I always try to be like fluid, you know, I want to be able to be flexible and bend with things. And so I just had another opportunity come up that was like, Hey, you can make some money. The thing is, I'm not just making that money. So I can come home and sit and watch Netflix at night. Yeah. Um, I, I am happy to do a job that's not necessarily my music. If I know, Hey dude, I just went and did that. Now, guess what that means to my music career? And so my music is just my why. Like when you're out there knocking doors, dude, like you go hours without doing like literally people just like shitting on you every single door. <laughs> and it teaches you that like you go through the nose to get the yes. And then that one yes, like even this, you know, being on your channel is awesome for me. And it's like how many people, you know, will reach out to get on stuff like this and never get out. So it keeps, it keeps that muscle strong also. And, um, it's going to accelerate it to where it's just like, there's a book called the dip by Seth Godin. And it talks about how there's like these natural, it's like natural barriers, I guess that life has and that keeps certain people from getting through to the other side. Mm -hmm. And with like economics and stuff, like if there's scarcity, then there's value. So in, in certain industries or really in any undertaking we have, it's like this. And then the harder it is to get, the more steep that that curve is, the less people are willing to do what it takes to get to the end of that shit. So I just see that having other income coming in is a way for me to get through the dip faster because to get through the dip of things, you have to get, you have to have resources, which is like time, money, knowledge, information, all that stuff. So 
um, yeah, I mean, I'm not full time, full time yet, but as I'm going through this, I'm, now I have a, I've uncovered where down the road I can start making more money and how it all works. It's like, it's like a map that's all covered up with dirt and you uncover some over here and you're like, okay, cool. That's that. And then you come over here and uncover some over here. And then eventually over time, it's kind of like you can see the whole picture. Almost. I love that, man. I think that's super important, particularly when it comes to music, because um, so many of these industries, let's just say you have a specific job, maybe it's a sales job or I mean, or sales um, driven company that you're building. All right. If you yep. say you want to stop doing everything else and focus on this, whatever you're starting to focus on is likely attached directly to revenue. Yes. To the music industry, right? You need a lot of time to learn and even, even to even get to revenue. So yes. it doesn't make sense to put yourself in a position where you have zero income. Or I don't know how you get that income, you know, whether you're interning for somebody or working with somebody, like you might say, I want to at least work for somebody within music, whatever it is. But you have to give yourself un, um, time to uncover those things on a map until you can figure out. Yep. What path. And then, OK, let me focus on following this path. But there's going to be so many things you bump your head on that you just had no idea. Like save yourself the struggle um, and yes. turn on somebody else's dime. That's what I always say. <laughs> that's beautiful, man. That's a lot of that's a lot of it. I know that there's like that. I feel good right now because I'm in that place where you don't want to have too much money from working too often that you're so drained that you can't create, but then you also don't want to have so much free time and be broke because then you can't create. You, feel like <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's this like catch 22. And so I was stoked when the summit went how it did because it like, it opens up a, a lane within the industry I want to be in where I'm adding value and it's free and so if people find value in it and they like it and they want to buy the, the things after then they could but it it's definitely like you know people have to get creative it's it's not like how it used to be within the industry and i just think a lot of people are not facing that mm. um so yeah it's it's great to burn your ships and i love that whole mindset of things and i still try and do that with everything i practice but it, you just got to weigh out what the cost of that is and what the benefit for the next five years looks like versus yeah. Maybe it'll take longer if you do it without having some income, you know? Exactly. There's still a way to go about it. Let's just yeah. let's say it that way. Um, and, it's all, and it's all marketing, dude. Like, literally, if you want to blow up, like, that's how all these people, people, you know, like, artists will see people like, how did that guy get big? Well, he had a lot of money to spend on ads, and he made some content that appealed to a lot of people, you know? Pretty much. That's that's the simple version. <laughs> right, right, right. Of course. It's true, though, right? It's true. All of them, all these activities on the back end, they still result in basically those two things. Yes, yes, yes. And, and that's not the only thing, obviously, like you can do it in a more resourceful manner, but those are constant, you know? It's like you're going to need some money for marketing because otherwise no one's going to hear it. And what's cool is you start getting on playlists and you start running ads to your shit. And over time, like on these playlists I've been on, I'm having people add my song still like every week I have new people discover it and then add it. So it's like you do a release that's like a heavy thing and then it kind of like trickles and they do another one and it trickles. Um, so that's kind of like the way that I'm, I'm going about. And it's no balls over time. So I, you just said something. Um, you said you do ads, you do ads for your music. So initially I did. Yeah. Whenever we did our release, we wanted to be um, like everywhere at once it was kind of funny because like people that i grew up with were like commenting on fa on like my ads on facebook yeah. like dude you're everywhere bro you're blowing up <laughs> and so with the internet that whole being able to be everywhere at once it's like you know they go to youtube they see my ad then they'll go over here and they'll see my ad so i have a partner that i work with that's really solid with marketing um and so i i really understand that like the concepts and all of that just by being around her for so long mm -hmm. um she does more of the actual going in and setting up everything. And whenever we're doing it, like we ran ads for that and it just, it just makes it's a lot of it's the perception, but yeah, you can run ads for anything like a new single or you can run ads. We, we built a, a, a mailing list, an email list for the musician mastery summit of like 700 people in like those two and a half weeks we were running ads. Mm -hmm. We made a Facebook group with like five or 600 people from it. So yeah, advertisement is, for anyone who, I mean, everyone probably knows, but it's like the sponsored posts that you see on Facebook and Instagram. Those are all paid for, you know? 
So yeah. if you do that enough and get in front of enough people, then they're going to like it. Then they'll hopefully share it. And Wendy Day put it really good. She just said the purpose of advertisement is to start word of mouth. Yeah, I, I like that. So what did you, what was your budget for your ad campaign? And did you, did you do multiple assets in terms of, Hey, I'm going to do a video on YouTube and I'm going to do like picture on Instagram. Like wh how, what did that look like? Good question. So we did, I think there was a total of like 10 different images and then we split, we AB tested like probably 20 different varieties of ad sets kind of saying the same stuff. So what that looks like is we come up with a bunch of different ad copy, which is just the sales stuff that you read. Right. And for the summit, it was like, Hey, tired of feeling the problem was that everyone feels confused about the music industry. And it was like, you're tired of trying to figure it out on your own. Basically we brought together the best experts click below to get your free ticket type of thing. Um, and then I think that we were getting people, I don't know the exact number, but it was under like $3 we were getting signups for, or maybe $2. Um, and again, with all this stuff, you can just take that data and you can just like literally see what it would be. Okay. Well we spent, I think we spent like not very much. I think it was like under two grand on ad spend total. Um, but now we can look at those exact numbers and we can take the ad sets that worked. Cause like I said, most of them didn't produce like probably one, 20% of your ads that you try are the ones that bring in 80% of your revenue usually. So yeah, well now we can go and we can just take that exact data and we can just scale it up. Yeah. But, be more effective. So, yep. I appreciate that information. I think that's going to be super helpful for everybody, but I was actually asking not for the conference, but if you ran ads for yourself as an artist, because you said people you grew up with say you were blowing up. So they were, yeah. Saying, you multiple yeah, ads. yeah. Yeah. So we were doing, um, we were doing Instagram and Facebook ads. Uh, uh, we also did some YouTube, some stuff for YouTube for my first video that I did, but we just did that the week leading up to the release. And I think we only spent like four or 500 bucks on that. Um, but it was cool. Cause like I had people that I didn't know. Well, one, I used the retargeting to everyone who's visited my Instagram. So I created a custom audience on in the ads manager for Facebook because Facebook and Instagram are both run through that. You can do more detailed targeting than a boost post. And, um, yeah, we just, I had a, I had a retargeting audience for my Instagram. So I just took everyone who'd visited my Instagram, my website, all that stuff. So then I was just advertising my re upcoming release to my warmest audience. And then from there, I believe that we did some stuff where it was like um, geographically located. But if I had like a huge, if I, you know, if I have 10 grand in ad spend eventually for like another release, then we'll just do that on a much larger scale. I think that probably we tried certain cities and then kind of see which ones pick up the most and then just doubling down there. But with, with all the ad stuff online, it's really just like you find what works and then you just double down on that and eliminate the things that weren't working. Got it. So from the little bit you did with yours, you feel like it's worth just increasing that again to just do straight up advertisement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's just another way to, to approach it. And it's like, it's that whole thing again, like it takes people six or seven times to buy something. So if they see you here and then all of a sudden they click over to Graham and Sean, they see you're there and then they go to YouTube and they see this, like, like I could target people who like you. I can specifically target people after this who like you. And I can be like, Hey, check out my interview with Bram and Sean. And then I'm just showing an ad to people who like you on Facebook or whatever it is um, about talking to you. So it's like, there's certain ways to target and certain things to do. Another one that's cool is you can find artists that are like you. Let's say you're an artist and you think that, I don't know, you know, Post Malone is the same type of person that, you know, you can, you can target people then who like him and who like Spotify or something, you know? So then you're only showing the ad to the people who have Spotify for sure. Um, so yeah, it, there's just so many different ways and that's all like digital marketing stuff is just a whole nother animal. But I, I don't, I think it's going to be more than half of what the music industry is moving forward. Like it's all of it basically. Cause that's all the, I see ads that look the same from independent artists who are doing it good as the people who are signed by these huge labels. Cause it's the exact same platform. Like the labels don't have a different platform than me and you, you know, yeah, there's no TV or anything like that to differentiate the actual credibility. Like, um, like I remember her when I first discovered her, mm -hmm. Either I popped up on her and then I started seeing retar uh, retargeting ads or either I saw um, some ads first um, or, it was, yep. or 
I, well, it seemed to all happen at the same time, but that's because it was ads, right? You know, um, but I was probably like one of the first, let's just say 30,000 people to like, to discover her that's still pretty low just considering where she yeah. is now. But right. like that, she had a label behind her, right? It's, but it's the exact yeah. experience, but if people say ads don't work, I think what people have to do is more people have to get more comfortable with spending that money and understanding it's an investment over the long term. If you're expecting it to be, hey, I spend $3,000 and now I have a legitimate career from that $3,000, it might be a little bit harder with that mentality because you're expecting cause you all you have to spend first three thousand dollars maybe just to learn what the right target yes. um, is for yourself right it's uh, yes it's pretty interesting one quick question i want to see if you know this because yeah. i thought about this um, um a while ago probably mm -hmm. over a year ago but i just haven't um had the opportunity to do it because i stopped mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot of individual work with artists now mm -hmm. you know if i could target let's just say Who's a big person on Instagram? Let's say Shiggy, right? You know, Shiggy's on Instagram. Uh, he blew up because of the whole Drake thing, Shiggy Challenge. Could I yeah. target his following? Um, depending on how big it is, like, and I don't know him specifically, but some people, like, if it's a big person, yeah, you really can. Like, you could go and, so, like, I could go and target, like, Incubus or Sublime or one of these bands, and you can just set it up to where you're literally showing ads only to them. And I've even gotten served ads that are really super effective by artists that have been like, hey, do you like this artist? Well, if you like him, then you'll probably like this sound. Click yep. here to hear the new single on. And it's just like, there's going to be a dude sitting there bored or something at work. And he's going to be like, yeah, I do like them. Let me check it out. And I, I don't, and a lot of times we think of the ads like, oh shit, another ad. And just because we don't like it, like, it doesn't mean that someone's not going to do it. Yeah, it's like whenever I started knocking door to door, like way back in the day, I was like, dude, no one, I never would buy anything from someone door to door ever. Like dude comes to my door, I'm like hiding there, shut the blinds. But then you go out and like you find people that are like, come on in, you know, they're like, let's do it. So I just, yeah, so it's like, I think you said it, but, and this is like my whole thing. Whenever you start putting it out there with ads, then you get your true response. Then you get what people actually like. Like some of the shit we talked about in the summit, I really thought was like the best that everyone's going to love and no one ever asked or said that they loved it. And then other stuff that I thought everyone already knew people were like, yo, I love this. I'd never thought of it that way. And I'm just like, huh, who would have known? So you really get an idea when you start putting it out there and people probably, a lot of the listeners have probably boosted posts before. Mm -hmm. um, boosted posts are great, but it's just kind of like a random throwing it out yeah. there. And Don't boost and those. They're not, not as narrow. Right. Yeah. So, if you can really like, and now people are boosting, like I get served boosted posts from people like right now that like, they're just like boosting some random picture that they took in their backyard with their old school, like, but you know what I mean? But yeah. if you can use the, in the ads manager, you can set up custom audiences so that you're only targeting specific people. And there's like a list of parameters that you can target by, but that's the, that's the beautiful part about this is, is that like, you can go at your own pace. You can target this, the exact kind of people you want. You can avoid targeting certain people that you know won't like it. Yep. Um, it's really amazing. It's amazing the potential of, of what we can do now, you know? Yeah, man. I was hoping that you, there, there was a way and you might have known it because I, I hate that when I first thought about it, you you can only target people of a certain side. And it sounds like that's still true. I mean, I, I tried on everything, but I, I could uh, target people that – like aren't necessarily huge but they might have a huge following on instagram or a huge uh -huh. they may have 500 000 people like imagine uh -huh. like i would always say if you do a collaboration with an instagrammer right mm -hmm. or you can do this with me on youtube but mm -hmm. so you, but like if, if i could just do a collab on the instagram and all these people love this instagrammer and they're doing they're dancing to my song and i could just take that clip and then target all their followers right yeah yes i, I love yeah, you, yeah man you can do that so like you can do that i i don't know specifically each person differs because they have to be a certain size that's one thing that's cool though it's yeah one cool. thing that's cool though is if you can find someone who's sorry to cut you off i got a little delay but if you can find someone that's bigger like that once you type that in the it'll actually start suggesting other people that are like that mm -hmm. yeah you know i mean so but yeah, you can, I, I don't exactly know on that, on his specific thing, but if you open up the ads manager, you can type in there and, um, and it will usually show you. 
Yeah, I think I, I think the way to go about it for that strategy is just finding somebody that you can do it with for now. <laughs> because well, no it's always, it is always changing though too. Like yeah, you know, they're always taking stuff away and, and it's always changing. But yeah, it's definitely something to look into if you're an independent artist. You know, even just if you can do like I can run like basic stuff, but you, you don't need nothing anything crazy. It's just like you you have to show your music to people and it's a direct line to the person you're trying to show it to. But what you talked about as far as the um, return on it, find a, find a way to monetize yourself, you know, find something to monetize because I can actually look at hard data on the summit numbers and say this much is what it costed to get someone on the list. This many people watched out of this many people that watched this many people came and got the recordings and then I can compare those numbers. I think it's just, a, I think it's a down the road thing, but I would assume with music, I'm not there yet, but um, I would assume the, the more clout you get, the more you can start charging for shows and different things like that. So I think that it's more like, it's a long game with music. And that's, I think why a lot of people are in it and it's a lot of convolution, but then like certain people will become outliers and it's because they make it through that dip I was talking about, you know? 100%. 100%. Um, it's funny because when you talk about that whole dip scenario, I think uh, because of the internet and where it is now, it used to be like this, but then because of how, where it is now, it's more like eh, a little bit further down and then the dip happens. So it's like yep. a little bit further, but the dip is still there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, it's, yeah it's, it's literally with anything too. Working out, it's with like, like yeah. everything that applies to and so. <clears throat> In his book, he talks about the Sundance kid in like that old Western movie is running away from his. And this is why I, whenever I'm going through some like challenge, I think of this and with my music, especially like, I don't care if it takes me till I'm like 45 to build a big enough audience to be able to do this. Mm. Um, in that, in that movie, they're running away from people that are chasing them and they literally head for the hills and they start going up higher and higher and the more uh, crazier terrain, crazier terrain until they almost are dying because they're like on these cliffs and shit. But it took to get to that extreme point to kind of like burn off the draws and like have all the, all the bad things in your life fall away from you. So the further I go doing something that isn't like realistic and is like a pipe dream and all these different things that, that whenever you go the path that's least taken, um, you know, like the further you go, the more reward there is because there's scarcity there. And so that's where the value is at, you know? True. true. I love that, man. I think that's a great spot to end on. Is there anything oh. else other than the wisdom you just dropped that you would like to uh, leave people with? Man, no, just, just go and follow me on, on YouTube or on Instagram at Aaron Wolf Music. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing another summit. We do the summit. They're free. Um, so stay Very tuned for cool. that. Yeah, the summit's free. So anyone who watches it the first time, uh, so like as it happens live, it's free. You can watch it. Um, and then we do we resell the recordings for anyone. You can even go to musicianmasterysummit.com right now if, if anyone wants to get the recordings from the last one. But I'm again, man, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. I love your platform. Um, having someone kind of do what you're doing, it just shows other people that they can do it. Um, so I, I like what you're doing a lot, and I'm, I feel blessed to be a part of it, bro. Dope, man. I appreciate that, man. And I really respect what you're doing, obviously. That's why I reached out. So, right, hey, everybody, once again, as you always know, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.